finally famous. What are we looking for? We're looking for the domain of the composition of functions. But first, we need a game plan. A game plan. We find the domain of the inside. Then, we evaluate and simplify. Then, we find the domain of step two. After we simplify, then we union, or onion, sound it out. We onion up the two intervals. Put them together. What do we need? We need a couple of functions. f of x is one minus x over two x. g of x is one over one plus two x. What's next? We need to find the composition. And what? That is f of g of x. Yeah, that's how that's writ. That's wrote like that. So what's the inside function? The inside function is g of x. What's next? We need to find the domain of g of x. Here, g of x is 1 over 1 plus 2x. What's next? You know, you can never divide by 0. You can never divide by 0. You can never divide by 0. So you ask yourself, oh, denominator. Where are you, zero? And then you solve that on them. Bam! That's minus one, fun, and then x cannot be minus one half. All right, we'll just put that in our pocket. And step two. We're going to evaluate the composition and simplify. So we're going to go and we're going to throw g of x into x, everywhere we see it in f of x. And we do that now. That's 1 minus g of x is that blue one. 1 over 1 plus 2x all over 2 times. Wow, that should have been white. OK, 2 times g of x. That's 1 over 1 plus 2x. What's next? I just want to make that one white. Now we get powder blue. Okay, sure. So what does that look like? Uh, I need to clean that up. Let's call that one minus one over two. Whoa, whoa, whoa there. One plus two x. Yeah, that's one. All over. Let's call that two over one plus two x. Yeah. Now what? We want to clear those fractions. Let's do it a clean way. By what? Multiplying top and bottom by the common denominator. The common denominator of all the denominators is 1 plus 2x. 1 plus 2x. What do we see? We see this guy. Oh, uh, whoa. Now real careful. All right, so I see this a lot. You need to distribute this in. Ooh, ooh. And I'll write that right down here. That's 1 plus 2x from what? The 1 plus 2x times the 1. And then it's going to be, then it's going to be minus, minus 1 plus 2x, because bam, over 1 plus 2x, and then that's all over. These guys, uh, uh, oh, deuces. Now, before we say goodbye to that problem, I need to go and I need to clean it up. I'm going to call that one 1. So then I take it right here. Whew, hope I have enough room. That blue part, that's that 1 plus 2x minus that 1 minus that 1. It's all over that 2. Oh, so here we see these guys fight. Uh, uh, oh, and I'm left with 2x over 2. Now what? I simplify further. And in doing so, uh, uh, we see that we're just left with x, which means that those two functions are inverse, but that's coming later. Now, what's the restriction here? There is no restriction there. You're not dividing by zero. You don't have any roots. There aren't any logarithms. No trig functions. So what? No restrictions. All right. So that one's... Oh, that's everywhere. So now we're on to step four. We need to put them together. We need to put them together. What? This one and that one. So our only restriction is x cannot be one half. So if we're on a number line, bam, minus one half, this is good. 
this is good, that's not good. How do we put that together in interval notation? Like this, that's minus infinity to a minus one half, and we onion that up with minus one half to infinity. Box and flower. Now, had we had a domain restriction on that one, when we put it together, it wouldn't have been included in our interval. That's about that. We're sorry, the number you have dialed is not in service at this time.